from a military point of view, when you hear this talk about Russia might use a nuclear device, what goes through your mind? They take it seriously. They have thousands of them. Uh, they talk about using them all the time, but I think it's very unlikely. There's zero battlefield advantage for the Russians to use a nuclear weapon. They can't destroy cities any more than they're already doing with what they have. So I really only see downsides for the Russians. There, there's no upside to using a nuclear weapon. And I think the general staff knows this. And I'm, I'm actually skeptical that the, the dozens of people that would have to be involved in the execution of the employment of a tactical nuclear weapon, I don't think most of them would actually be willing to go along with it. And of course they know that the United States would have to react. And the reaction from the United States, we don't know the specifics yet, but my president has made it clear he will, and it will be catastrophic. And I think the general staff knows that they could end up losing half of the Black Sea fleet, thousands of troops, other capabilities inside Ukraine. So that's why I think it's unlikely. And I also think that the diplomatic costs are absolutely enormous. This will bust their relationship with China, it will bust their relationship with India. It will make them a global pariah, like North Korea on steroids. And I don't think that the uh, nuclear button is nearly as simple as people think. Right. It's not just the chain of command that has to be implemented for the things to go off. I think you would also see extraordinary countermeasures from the West, and possibly also from the Chinese, to interfere with that chain of, chain of, chain of command if they really thought Putin was going to do it. I think that the pushback would be enormous if Russia used nuclear weapons. And to some extent, we're prisoners of Hollywood here. We think there's a nice, neat narrative arc. Um, and either you get Dr. Strangelove at the end or James Bond diff diffusing the yeah, device. Yeah. And it's not like that. I think there will be problems within the Russian command and control system if you really tried to use nuclear weapons. I think there would also be um, very substantial intervention from the Western countries and probably also from China to try and interfere with that command and control to make sure that the devices didn't actually go off. And if he was stupid enough, um, to launch even a dirty device or a demonstration explosion or something like that. That's the end of his relationship with China. It's the end of his relationship with India. And he's basically turned uh, Russia into North Korea on steroids. And I think even he and the kind of death cult, um, fatalist atmosphere that he likes to push into the Russian media, I think even that would be a bridge too far for him. It tells me that Russia's nuclear weapons really are only effective so long as they don't use them. Yeah. When they do use them, it's, it's done. Nuclear weapons are a great deterrent against other countries attacking with nuclear weapons. That's the utility. And they work 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, deterring attack. That's why we have them. They are not useful for fighting a war against a determined adversary. Um, it would have no effect on Ukraine. I think it would be counterproductive in every, in every way if you, if you do it. And I think deep down he knows that. And to me it was really interesting when he was threatening nuclear weapons and he had to say, and I'm not bluffing. Right, right, that Anyone in a negotiation who says, I'm not bluffing, is implicitly conceding that there's a danger people think they're bluffing. And that's not great in the world of nuclear deterrence where credibility is everything. Is it accurate to say that we have deterred ourselves, that we, we have um, overestimated the risk of a Russian escalation of some sort and so as a result of that we continue to stop just short of saying we want Ukraine to win um, or providing certain capabilities that would accelerate Ukrainian victory but there's this uh, cloud of we don't want World War III, we don't want them to escalate. That's absolutely right. This fear of escalation is kind of mental prison that we have put ourselves into and locked ourselves. Um, we, we've gone into this cage, and we padlocked it and swallowed the key. That was really stupid. And we are now doing far more than we thought was possible back in February. Yeah. If we'd done in February what we're doing now, there wouldn't be a war. So we are always making things too little and too late, and we're doing that because we're scared of so-called provoking the Russians. And yet we end up doing it. We just have to wait until another thousand, another 10,000 Ukrainians have died, until there's been a bit more destruction, and then we think, oh yes, okay, we need to send them this weapon system after all, we need to do this, this extra thing. So the Ukrainians are washing away with their blood the marks that these lines in the sand that Russia's trying to draw. And in the end, the lines don't exist, the blood's there, and we go ahead and do what we should have done anyway. You remember back in February, there was even debate about whether or not to provide Stinger over concerns that if an American-made Stinger was used by a Ukrainian soldier to shoot down a Russian helicopter, that could 
lead to escalation. I mean, how ridiculous does that seem now? You can always create re reasons for not doing things. The Germans were saying, we can't send tanks because they have the German Iron Cross on it, and this will be a gift for Russian propaganda. You can always find reasons not to do things. What we need to do is find reasons to do them, and they're very obvious. Ukraine can win this war. We just have to give them the tools, and they will finish the job. Thanks, Edward. Once again, you've uh, enriched our conversation. That's a real pleasure. Good.